Hey everyone, recently I upgraded my lights out kit and put a 20 amp hour life PO4 battery in there, which makes it even more convenient and more useful than it used to be. Uh, a lights out kit is one of the most important kits that you can have in preparedness. One of the most useful kits that you can have in preparedness, just because any sort of disaster situation, emergency situation, uh, those are, it, it's nice and useful if you, the lights go out, it's pitch dark, and you have a kit all ready to go. So instead of searching all over the house for a flashlight here, or extension cord there, you've got this kit set up that will get you a jump started, I suppose, and headed in the right direction. Now, I'm not gonna go through the whole kit in this video. I wanna show you the build that I did, but I do have that video over on my other YouTube channel, The Bug Out Location, and you can, it, it's got a detailed list of everything that's in there and why it's in there. Uh, really good video, and I'll make sure and link to that below in the description. But this video, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to set up uh, to put a battery inside a toolbox or whatever sort of kit you're using. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of electrical skill. Uh, it's It can be done just about by just about anyone. I mean, it's super simple to do. And it really, like I said, it really makes it a lot more useful uh, for any time I need it in the future. So with that, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial here just real quickly about how uh, I went about doing this. Uh, and maybe it'll give you some ideas and, and some things to do uh, for your lights out kit or even just a, a little battery box all by itself. Uh, pretty neat. So let's go ahead and get into the build process and how I did this. Okay, so the first thing I did was put the battery in and I cut a piece of wood that fit. It was about 10 inches across because I want to keep the battery separate from everything else inside the kit right there. So uh, the, the piece of wood is pretty snug and later on I added some Velcro as well. Then I measured out where I wanted, I wanted to put this outlet on the front. So I just sort of eyeballed it and made... Uh, the circles and everything where the where I was going to cut the holes. And then I also put uh, markers where I was going to uh, screw in the screws. And with these screw holes, I actually pre-drilled these a little bit because it's just a little easier to get the screws in there with the, the holes pre-drilled. So I just pre-drilled a really tiny hole right there. And then I cut the the interior holes, and this was a one and one eighth, I believe. I'll make sure and put that in the description below. And this is where the three prong outlet will go. Uh, after that, I made sure just cleaned up the outside edges a little bit. You could use a Dremel. I used just a little razor knife right here. Uh, whatever you need to do to just kind of clean up those outside edges. It doesn't matter what it really looks like because it's going to be covered uh, by the the face plate there. So. Uh, you just want it to be able to sit flush. And then put in the four screws around the outside edges, made sure everything fit nice and snug. Uh, one problem I did run into a little bit later was that uh, it was a little bit tough to get those. The holes weren't quite uh, centered, so it was a little tough a little bit to get uh, those plugs in there. But uh, just use a, uh, again, just use a razor or something. You can widen those out. Then you're ready to put in the plugs themselves. And like I said, this could be a tight fit. You might need to just adjust a few things here and there. And this, this little kit came with all three of the plugs included. So I just, if you need to take a picture of how the wiring is set up, I unplugged all of the wires in there and, and made these individual pieces. So there's four pieces total. You've got the three plugs and the outlet. Uh, and then you can you can really put these in any order you want. I put the power switch up on top and then the USB connectors in the middle and then the the cigarette lighter output on the very bottom there. And then on the back of this, I see these little connectors right here. I'm just making sure those are nice and tight. Everything's going to sit where it's supposed to uh, before I put in the wiring. And once I got those on and they were nice and snug, then I moved to the, the power input, the AC charging port that I put on the side right here. Now, I used the same size hole saw 
and I shouldn't have because it made the hole a little bit too big. But I don't really care about this being waterproof, so it's not a huge issue, but I would use a smaller hole saw for putting on this side AC input, uh, power input right here. And what I ended up doing was just getting some screws with bolts on the inside uh, and it, some washers and it snugged it right down. And as you can see right here, you can see a little bit of light coming through there. That's because that hole is just a little bit too big. Uh, then comes the wiring part of this. And again, if you took a picture, you just plug it in exactly the way it was before. The negatives connect to each other and then the positives connect to each other with one extra positive wire that will be uh, going to the battery from the cutoff switch, uh, which will completely, uh, it, it'll save your battery from discharging if that, thing's, if that thing is on all the time, you're gonna have to be recharging your battery all the time. So you can turn that off and make sure that doesn't happen. It's also got a 10 amp fuse in here. Then what you do is you take and just measure where you I don't want a bunch of extra wire in there. So I measured them to get them the right length of these end connector, that end connector right there. I don't need on there either. So just wanted to make sure I have the smallest amount of wire in there as possible. So I measured these uh, and got the right distance. Then use this tool right here to cut off the ends. And this is a cheap little, uh, little wire cutter from Amazon that you can get. It's just fine for up to, I believe, like four gauge wire. Anything bigger than that, you're probably going to need something else. But uh, this is good for 10 gauge wire. Then I've got these strippers right here, again, that I got from Amazon. And it just pops. It's a lot easier than using a razor blade and a lot cleaner. You just throw it in there, clamp it, and it pops it, and it pulls that sheath sheathing off right there. And then you put the uh, the protectors on here, sort of a shrink wrap type thing. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but you put this on there as as well as the end, uh, but put these on there before you put the end on. And then you can wrap this and just make sure there's not going to be any shorts or anything like that. Now with these end clips, I wanted to make sure I've got a kit that's got a bunch of different sizes. So I wanted to make sure one that it was going to fit on here first uh, before I connected them to the wires. Uh, so with that same tool I had that strips them, you can also use it to crimp these wires as well. So what I did uh, was put that little piece in there uh, in the crimping section of it and then plug the wire into that and squeeze down really hard. There's one part right here that uh, sort of puts a dimple in it and then there's another part that squeezes the whole thing down on it and makes it nice, tight and secure. I did this for both of these, and then I just used a lighter for this uh, shrink protective stuff right here. Uh, you can use a heat gun. You can use whatever you need. I just used a lighter for this, and it just gives it a nice, good uh, protective cover. That way, you're not getting any shorts or anything like that. And this comes with the kit that has these connectors on them. Did the same thing for the second one, same exact process. You crimp it. Uh, you put the shrink wrap on it right here. Uh, then you're ready to connect everything. You're good to go. Uh, always connect the positive first, just because if there's any sort of, you know, if those wires do touch each other, uh, it's not going to cause any sort of short or anything like that. Once I plugged those in, the AC was ready to, uh, ready to, I've, I've got both of them plugged in. So I've got the three prong outlet and the AC charger plugged in. Uh, to the battery itself and then i just put some velcro on i wanted to put some velcro on to make sure the battery stays firm against the toolbox itself and then i also and i put the wires tried to put the wires below uh, that velcro so they would stay down there as well they're not popping up through the top and then i also put a couple pieces of velcro on the wood uh, because i wanted that wood to stay in place as well although it is pretty snug in there it's not really going to go anywhere. I just wanted that extra uh, extra uh, security right there. Now, you could drill holes. You could. There's a lot of different methods. This was the simplest method uh, that, that I wanted to do just to show you guys in this video. I may build an entire box that fits right in there in the future. Uh, but for now, this works, uh, this works just fine. So now that that battery is nice and snug in there, 
Uh, everything's good to go. And then uh, the power outlets work. You you see the battery right there. Really simple setup. There's enough room in the front there for those cords not to be pushed or touched together. Just a really simple setup. All right, so that's it. Pretty simple, pretty easy. It can be done by just about anyone. Uh, you get a hole saw and a battery and one of those little plugs and you're good to go. Uh, like I said in the video, this can be done uh, with a number of different things. It doesn't have to be necessarily a lights out kit. You can make your own sort of box. You can put it in another box, but it's really simple to do and something that's just really going to be useful if the power goes out. And even if it doesn't go out and you just need uh, to charge something and you're not near an outlet, uh, you're good to go. So uh, with that, uh, if you want to find out what I put in that list, like I said in the beginning, make sure and head over to my other channel, The Bug Out Location, uh, and I've got the link to that video in the description below, but you'll see what I keep in that box. Uh, if you have any ideas, any comments, uh, leave them in the comment section below this video. I'll answer you, but uh, until next time, take care and prepare, everyone. We'll talk to you all later.